Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jackson Miller, and a very special welcome to our viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. It's what's been dominating public discussion since last week. Even though the bill was tabled in March, we're talking about the National ID System needs. The National ID Bill was debated and passed in the Senate on Friday. It was not supported by the opposition. Now, before we go to our guest, um, well, in just a moment, joining us this evening, I should say, we have Lambert Brown, opposition senator. Also with us, Shirley Richards, attorney at law and member of the Jamaica Coalition for a Healthy Society. And with us as well, Roger Malcolm, advocacy manager of Jamaicans for Justice. But before we go to them, here's Vashon Brown with this overview. Okay, I should say as well, though, we'll go to that overview in just a moment, but I should let our viewers know that we did, of course, invite the government um, to have a representative present on the program. We were told that they could not find a suitable representative. All right, so let me start with your Lambert Brown, because before we get into the issues, and there are many, I have to ask why the opposition was so late to the table on this one well i don't know i sit in the senate yes and I, you just said the bill was presented in march yes. but let's get some things out the bill was presented in march and withdrawn when it came first for debate because the government said the bill was weak and had many errors they then brought a new bill somewhere there in june rushed it through and therefore, the opposition made clear our position. We had a meeting with the technical team earlier in the year. We had a meeting with the Prime Minister on about the 28th of June. We made clear to him that we wanted a joint select committee. The government said in June, well, we really want to get the money quick. And so we can't afford a joint select committee. Opposition waited. In September, they came and they had the debate. They came to the House, and I tell you, the Senate was prepared for this bill. And so we know the opposition made proposals, and there was a hundred amendments coming out of the House. So I don't think we were late. There was no public discussion, not on radio, not on TV. So let's blame the entire society for not taking it up. I operate elsewhere, and I put the thing on the table. I'm thankful for Jeff J., Christians, the coalition of Healthy society. society and others who, who took an interest in this. I know the opposition spoke and met with JFJ in developing position. Any bill that goes to the parliament and I, I, comes I'm out going, to I'm going to stop. Amendments. Yes, but I'm going to stop you for a moment because the point I was actually making, though, is that sure, there was vigorous debate, certainly in the Senate. But when I say the opposition was late to the table on this, I mean in terms of saying to the country, hold on, this is something serious. You all need to watch out for. Whatever changes may or may not be, be there, there are certain concerns we have. So what I had done, for instance, the, the Gleaner had an editorial today, today saying you guys were let the country down on this. But I don't agree with them. We yeah, have but Zozo, what, we had other bills being done yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, so but let, let me... let not put a timetable. The government... No, let, let, me, the let, me sh let me show you a timeline. Do, yeah. we, do we have our timeline ready that I can pull up? Let me see if I can pull up our timeline. Because what I'd actually done was I went... Okay, I can't pull it up. Um, so I'll hopefully pull it up by the next segment. What I'd done, though, is I went through my system, because I'm on most people's mailing lists, mm -hmm. right? So in March, the government sent out a statement saying, here we go. In March, the government sent out a statement from OPM saying NIDS is on target, bill taken to the House. 16th of June, OPM sent out another statement saying NIDS is, is to transform Jamaica. June, the OPM started making interview requests on this. July, I don't know when they had finished it, but so Jeff, hold on, no, that's not the issue. No, that's you, the no issue. that is not the issue. In July, Jamaicans for Justice sent me their initial technical comments on the bill, right? In August 14, OPM again asked for interview requests on the issue. August 24, JFJ and the OPM were inviting people to dialogue on the bill. September 28, OPM again made interview requests on the bill. November 10, JFJ sent me a second set of technical 
comments on the bill and when did we see the opposition show up on this publicly in terms of alerting yeah, the yeah, public hold on let me down let me let me down let me down you heard what i said engaging the public on this november on a jump in and start set to the public big problem big problem come on Dion, let me tell you what you're missing that the government, what am I missing? No, yeah, what you and the country is missing. The government, when did you talk to no, the I'm, public on this? That is what I'm asking when, you know. Once we got a bill, and we knew the bill was... Because I said the government, we, they, they met with us earlier, the technical team. We had a meeting with the spokesperson council at the Pegasus Hotel. We told them where we were. The bill wasn't really ready. And it is in June they called us back. The bill since then has gone through numerous changes. So how could we be telling the so public? So how I how I was able to get two because sets of technical Because what you took comments. is what the government how said. Was I? No, no, no. I am pointing to the fact that a local advocacy group, I'm sorry, I'm sure I am embarrassing well, Roger, was able to give me two full, complete sets of technical comments. And you guys never showed up in the public arena till last week. But we showed up when the bill came to the house. We spoke to it right. in the house. So we make it that clear. All right. Jeff Jake will tell you that when they gave you those technical comments, there have been several changes. And Which is why they amended the technical comments. Well, that's the point I'm making. So how could the opposition be going out and tell you, Hey, right. this is in the bill when the government is changing it day by day. All right. If we you, took you, the decision people, when people they gave make, you the... People can make their own yes, determination. Yes, put the bill out there, other people we were it. out there talking about and this and the right, opposition and we was not. We were talking about Zozo. We were talking about the other things. So let us not right. believe that this was the only show in town. If that makes you feel better. No, it don't make me feel better. It is about the truth. No, it's about the what public and your duty and to the public. And our duty to the public involves Zozo. It involves And the media they also fell down on it because you didn't we, take it We up. weren't doing discussions I, no, on no, this. No, no, you weren't. Were, you weren't. I we know. Did an all on my program on this, we, we, did we took it up. So how would you right? know seeing that you were on air at because the same I time as me? Because I have people who will listen to all the programs and inform me. Well, obviously they're not informing you right? enough. The but public so, was not so paying attention. Say, the opposition has taken the role in defending the country. When the, horse, when when the horse gone no, through the gate. No, the horse gone through the gate. The horse gone through the gate. All right, let's go to the overview now, no? It's what many people have been talking about for the past few days, a bill that appeared before the Senate. A bill entitled an act to establish a body to be called the National Identification and Registration Authority for the promotion, establishment and regulation of a national identification system that facilitates the enrollment and registration of all citizens of Jamaica and individuals who are ordinarily resident in Jamaica. The bill was first debated in the lower house and passed with 100 changes. There was a marathon Senate sitting last Friday, which ended after one Saturday morning. Government senators led the arguments for the bill. It is here to remove the anonymity that has plagued so many of our citizens, yes. that has created so many of the social ills or augmented them where they are because of the anonymity that faces us. Man cannot scam if man has an ID that he cannot hide from. The opposition senators, the arguments against. I'm saying, why is it mandatory? Why is it that if I want to just maintain my driver's license? Why is it that if I want just to use my passport? Why is it that if I want just not to participate because I believe in revelations? After over 14 hours, only 19 of the 65 clauses had been dealt with. So the upper house continued their deliberations on Monday. Clause 20, section 1 of the bill, makes it clear that every Jamaican shall be part of the database. Opposition senators want Jamaicans to have a choice by replacing the word shall with me. There's a review process after 18 months. And we use public education, persuasion, and other means to get a buy-in from the public in a non-mandatory way. And during the review process, we can assess where we are. But leader of government business in the Senate, Kamina Johnson-Smith, argued that if it's not mandatory, the national identification system needs would not work. I've structured the bill in a way that all the clauses do not come into effect at the same time so that we can properly phase not only the rollout and education, but also when it is that there will be any e effective penalty. In the end, the changes proposed by the opposition were not accepted. The mandatory provision remains. 
So after 12 hours of deliberations and 168 amendments, the National Identification and Registration Bill was passed in the Senate on Monday night. I do report the result of the divide, eyes 11, nose 6, the eyes have it. We have worked very hard over the last two days and we have actually achieved 168 amendments in all. This, this, this is an indication of the very point that we have made, that the bill would have benefited from the widest consultation. And and from going to a joint select or select committee. I, however, don't share the view that what we have accomplished has demonstrated that the bill should have been put before joint select committee. I believe it is actually the converse. We have demonstrated that with focus, with energy, and with cooperation, that we can make changes in an effective and a small group of people gathered outside Parliament on Monday afternoon to protest against the National ID Bill. The group included representatives from the Marcus Garvey People's Political Party. What is behind all this? This haste to pass this bill. We are reminded by Revelations 13, the 666, the mark of the beast when you cannot buy nor sell. So we are saying, if England, Australia, India, and other greater nations than us have rejected the system, then who are we to accept it? Are we the guinea pigs? As well as the Paul Bogle Foundation. There's no way the Parliament of Jamaica should find time to be considering something like this. Civil Society member Jeanette Calder does not think the consultation was sufficient given the fundamental impact of the bill. 40 years of waiting, but not until it was tabled a few months ago did the country know about it. And the truth is, Rashawn, most of us really just started paying attention last week, Friday. When you look at the peak of the interest, if there was really engagement, I would like to believe that the Rastafarian community and myself wouldn't be standing here today. So I would like for the government to revisit how they do consultation, not on everything, but a bill of this nature. And I would really like the opposition to realize that they have a mechanism through which they can speak to the people if they find that the government is not doing that. By Tuesday, a day after the bill was passed in the Senate, opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips called a press conference. Dr. Phillips said the opposition senators voted against the bill and called for the government to reconsider its position. The bill that came to the Senate and which the government moved in the Senate differs in substantial ways from the bill that came through the House of Representatives. The way in which the bill was approached shows that careful enough preparation was not done. We are hoping still that the government will consider its, will reconsider its position and we reserve our rights to do all that is necessary in whatever forum, including the courts, to ensure that the rights of the Jamaican people are not trampled upon. Also on Tuesday, a press conference at Jamaica House. At that press conference, it was revealed that the government may miss its January 2019 deadline for the rollout of the pilot project of the National ID system based on the time it has taken for the bill to be passed in Parliament. Acting Chief Technical Director in the Office of the Prime Minister, Jacqueline Lynch-Stewart, says based on the delay, the implementation of the rollout may have to be pushed back by months. I'll be honest with you, because the bill has taken a little longer than we in the project team had anticipated, we will have to now go back and even see if January 2019 is realistic for the pilot. So we may even have to push it back by maybe one or two months. In fact, Program director for the project, Warren Vernon, says the pilot program, which will see all civil servants being registered under NIDS, will not start without the law being in place, as well as the regulations. Meanwhile, Director of Communications in the Office of the Prime Minister, Robert Morgan, says there was public education before the bill went to Parliament. But we can argue whether it was enough. And We said from the beginning that there is a national public education campaign that is to be rolled out. That started on Monday at 1 p.m. You will note that there are ads on television, ads in the newspapers, ads on radio, ads on social media, 
educating people about what the needs means. The difficulty with having public education before you have a law is that you may be educating people about something that does not exist. So let's say we're educating you about a clause in the bill that the Senate decides should not be there. Right? So there was some public education, but it was a bit difficult to launch a national public education campaign when you do not have a law that you can predicate that public education on. Vashon Brown, For All Angles. Thanks, Vashon. Listening to Mr. Morgan there, it leads me to believe that he has a fundamental misunderstanding of what it is people were calling for. People were calling for not a propaganda campaign to say needs is good. That is not what you would have before the bill is passed. What you would need to do is provide information to the public in an accessible form that they can understand so they can give meaningful input and feedback. Not what Mr. Morgan said there. Let's go to the break. Soon come.